Let's update Forge to 118. Let's see how to do that. All right, we found ourselves back in IntelliJ once more. And in this tutorial, we're going to be upgrading our Forge 117.1 project to 118.1. The long-awaited tutorial on how to basically upgrade, well, Forge. Now, there are some caveats here. Once we upgrade, a few things will not work, namely the biome and the dimension. Biomes completely changed, like entirely, and I'm not 100% sure, but at this moment in time, I don't think that anyone has figured out biomes in their entirety just yet. So that one definitely won't be, well, added. And then dimensions, we're just going to keep out as well for the time being. However, the rest should all work, including the rest of the world generation, and we're just going to go through. So first things first, the current version for 118.1 is 3908. That's good to know, so we need to know this one. And then also the parchment version is also available for 118x, and that's going to be the 19th of December. So we can go into our build.gradle file, and there's a few things we need to do. Number one, we need to first of all change this one right here. The tool chain language needs to be 17. Then we need to go to the parchment right here. This is going to be, it was the 1912, and that's of course 18. There you go. And then a little further down right here, this is going to be 118.1.39.08. That is the most current version for me. Once again, you can, of course, just go to the download for Forge and just take a look at what the most current version is, basically. And then we're going to hit this little elephant here in the top right corner. And I believe that we should get an error, first of all, which is totally fine, by the way. We're going to, I think, be greeted with at least two errors while doing this. Wait a second until this is done. All right, so there you go. Failed after 42 seconds. That is, like I said, totally fine. Because number one, what we need to do is we need to go to File, Project Structure, and then choose SDK 17 right here. So that's very important. If you don't have JDK 17 downloaded, you have to do this now, basically, so that you have JDK 17. I will link it in the description below from Adoptium once again and hit apply and then just once again making sure that on settings build execution deployment gradle under build tools gradle that the project sdk here is selected for gradle jvm and if that is fine then we can reload once more and try this with java 17 and now it should build properly there will probably still be a few errors here a few red things you know red text there don't worry about it at the end as long as we get a build successful all is going to be fine. This might, however, take, you know, a good couple of minutes even. All right, so here we are at the build successful, and you can see we even had over 100 errors, you know, only showing, and then 240 in total. No worries there. Like I said, we can basically ignore this as long as we get a build successful. If you don't get this, once again, download JDK 17, make sure that it's all set up like I've just shown you, and then it should work totally fine. Right, and now we come to the, well, fun part, and that is going through every, well, single one of our classes and making sure that everything works. As soon as I close the build.gradle file, we're going to immediately be granted with, well, a lot of stuff. So you can see, first of all, here we're actually not getting a few, well, vital things, namely something like if you're not getting the immutable map, that means that something has not downloaded properly. So we're going to have to run gradle w gen IntelliJ runs once more, because this one in this case is just, you know, the workspace just hasn't been set up properly in this case. So just make sure to run this and then the, well, most of this stuff should come back after the downloading of the assets and stuff. All right, so you can fix the issue with the immutable map by just deleting your .gradle folder right here and then reloading the gradle changes with this button right here. So just making sure that, you know, everything here is set up correctly, then you can see we are not actually getting that many errors in the, well, main class in this case, all things considered. Now this one we do need to delete. I mean, basically we can delete all of the unused ones in theory. That's going to be fine. There you go. All of the unused imports basically. And then we can immediately get rid of the mod biomes one because we're going to delete that class anyway. And we can then proceed in, first of all, going through all of them. So you can see mod flammable rotated pillar block, nothing to change right here. Well, there's going to be a few things to change, mainly basically the server stuff because, well, we're not going to have that. So what I'm just going to do is I'm just going to comment out the basically the entirety of this method and we're just going to return the super here. I have no issues. Actually, let's just delete the entire method here. That's going to be fine as well. The test block should be fine as well. That's okay. The tomato plant block should be fine. Just the mod item, but we have to save 
we have to change this in the mod items, so that's fine. All of the custom blocks actually totally fine. Now here, what you're going to have is the registry objects going to have an issue. Now, this is actually insanely easy to fix. You click on it, Alt and Enter, Import Class, done. You just have to go up here and make sure that you basically delete this. And then you can see the entire mod blocks class no longer has any errors. Now, there might be some problems related to it, but no more errors. That's really good. The data generators should also be all working. Uh, the only thing here is going to be this and the registry object once again. So the registry object, just import this. And once again, just get rid of this. And then here, once again, these are the mod items. So we just have to change this in the mod items. And then that's going to work as well. Mod loot table provider should work. Mod recipe provider, also just the items once again. So that's all fine. Lightning striker enchantment, no issues. Mod enchantments. The registry object here so once again click on it alt and enter import and then change the or delete the not used or wrong import there enchantments also done mod events no changes item well now we're getting to the interesting stuff custom item no, nothing no issues mod armor item also should be no issues actually same with the blowtorch also all fine the only thing here is once again the actual item that we're getting so that is something that we have to fix once again in the mod items. Mod armor material should also be fine. Once again, just the mod items. Creative tab, mod items, the mod items. There we go. Now just import the registry object once more. Delete the one that is no longer existing here. And then the mod items should clear up and all of the other errors should also clear up. And then in the mod tiers, we also have nothing. Util mod tags should be fine as well. So there you go. You can see that this is actually fairly straightforward. Now, when it comes to the biome, we're going to have an insane amount of errors because we're just going to take the entire biome package and we're just going to delete it outright. Once it, And we're going to basically do the same with the dimension package because neither of those are going to be, well, we're going to have anything to do with them. Same with the mod biome generation. We're just going to delete anyways. And then here, we don't even have the registry anymore. I believe we had it here. Yeah, there you go. Reg re generate biomes. We're just going to delete this as well. And we're going to be fine. We also have to then get rid of it like right here. I believe in the speedy block, we also have to get rid of this because we've used some imports here. So no worries there. Let's just get rid of all of them. I mean, it's, it's good to keep your imports nice and tidy anyway. So that is going to be fine as well. So that should pretty much be all of it. And then the big thing is going to be the world generation with a tree grower. should actually work totally fine, which is a relief. That's pretty good. Now, when I go into the mod configured features, that tells a different story. The rest, for the time being, can stay. We have to change a few things. This is no longer valid. This is no longer valid. Now, I will copy over a bunch of stuff here because that just makes it a little bit easier. But I will try to explain best I can. So instead of using the simple state provider, you can see this is now protected access. But luckily, we can use something that's even easier, and that is going to be block state provider that is simple. And then instead of passing in the block state, we can even just pass in the block, which makes it a little bit easier. Then we have to do the same thing for the leaves. And then the block state provider for the sapling, we actually have to delete outright. Now, the first thing you might ask is, wait a second, but how are we getting the, the sapling now? The sapling is no longer in our configured feature. That is correct, because we now need a separate configured feature. Now, the way that I set this up is in the following way. Uh, definitely not the most optimal, but it's going to work. So this is called the Redwood Tree Checked. And this basically has a random selector feature, which basically has the same feature selected twice. The issue being the filtered by block survival, actually a great thing that has been added, right? So basically the actual feature, the Redwood feature can only be placed in the world if I call this, right? The filtered by block survival, if this block here can survive on, you know, wherever we want to place this. Now this here returns a placed feature. Now that's great because a placed feature is now basically the thing that we have to place in the world. But this is the issue, for example, right here, right? So we have the configured feature in here, no, this is now a place feature. So they separated the configured features and the placed features to make this a little bit more, well, separate, I guess. Because it was very strange that, well, the configured feature you needed for the redwood to spawn, but then also you needed a configured feature, in that case, then of some kind of feature config to then place it in the world is all sorts of messed up. That's why I'm actually kind of happy that they changed it a little bit, but it basically requires us to, well, go from configured feature to placed feature to configured feature to placed feature and then spawn it in the world. 
So this is the way that this goes. Now I've taken out this place feature right here and I've immediately put this in here. So we're going basically from configured feature to another configured feature, which is this. And then we're going to make a place feature. In the features package, right click new Java class called the mod placed features. And this is going to look as follows. I will also copy this over because it just makes this a little bit easier. So you can see we're calling the placed method here with vegetal placement, trees placement, and then the placement utils count extra. So this is pretty much exactly the same thing that we had before. This is just not, this was just defined right here. You can see we have this decorated. We now no, don't need this anymore. What we can call here instead is we can call the mod mod placed features dot redwood placed. And what we then need to do is we need to change this configured feature here to placed feature. And then everything here should work. Now I just have to delete some of the imports once again. And then the mod tree generation is done. That is it. That's all that we need to do. What I can recommend to you for a little bit more in-depth discussion on this. Number one, I have a course on Udemy and Skillshare, which I have linked in the description below. So if you want, you know, in-depth discussion of this and more tutorials and lectures on 118 modding, there is over 11 hours included in this. So link is in the description below. The first two links, either Skillshare or Udemy. That's also where I explain the entire place feature stuff a little bit in more detail. Tutorials, of course, will still come out for free. No worries, but they will, of course, take a while. This might be an early access way of getting it. Number two, what I can always recommend, and I've recommended numerous times now, and I will keep recommending it, take a look at how vanilla does it. So for example, tree feature, middle mouse button click, where is this used? Middle mouse button click again, tree features. Oh, what do we have here? We have some configured features. What about the acacia? What is this done? Tree placement. Now we have a place feature, just like I said. What is this doing? Well, it filters by block survival by the acacia sapling. Mm, isn't that interesting? That's Sounds like exactly what we did. Okay, should check. Where is this done? Well, this is done in the vegetal features. So this once again makes a configured feature out of this for the tree savanna, for example. And then this tree savanna, if we take a look here, makes then a placed feature out of it. Like I said, configured feature, placed feature, configured feature, placed feature. That's the general idea. Just take a look at all of those classes. They're all under the world gen features class and then also under the world gen placement class. Uh, packages. Those two packages are basically the most important ones for this. That has everything that you need to know. Otherwise, like I said, link to the course is in the description below if you want a little bit more of a fast track to this. Right, next thing we're going to copy over is the place feature for the orchid right here and we're going to basically change it up in the configured feature as well. So this is now a configured feature looking like this of a random patch configuration. And this is once again just taken from vanilla basically. And look at this, we even have the pink rose in here still. That is of course not right. This needs to be orchid. There you go. And that's going to be fine. So this is the orchid config. And this is then turned into a place feature, the orchid placed right here. There you go. Now it's written correctly. The orchid placed. And this now needs to be called in the mod features once again. So it needs to be in the mod flower generation. So mod place features, orchid placed. And then instead of a configured feature here in this list, this is a placed feature. So this is a list of supplier of placed feature. And then we just add the orchid placed right here. So those two should already work totally fine. And now, of course, the one question that everyone's on their mind is the ore generation. Because look at how many things have changed here. Quite a few. Well, let's start from the bottom and let's go up. The first thing is we need to change this method to this. So I'm basically going to have both of them for a second. We're going to delete the or type right here. And we're going to make the, the range decorator configuration into a height range placement. So that is basically all that we need to do. And here we then call the same configured with the or feature config and then just place it with this placement. So that's number one, step number one. Now, all of our range decoration configurations right here have to be changed to height range placement and I'm actually going to copy the entire thing over and you can see this is just a well first of all it's called height range placement and the idea is that you have uniform and there is also triangle so you might have seen those pictures on how the well the height placement now is done once again I have a little bit more detail in the course on this also I definitely will do this differently in the 118 tutorial series and I've done this differently in the courses because I feel like this you know setup here is not no longer the most optimal one because one thing that is definitely missing from this mod or generation which we're not going to add is for example a deep slate or that's not going to be included however once again in the course and in the coming tutorials for 118 this will definitely be included so no worries there 
right same here right instead of making this a configured feature this needs to be a place feature and then the re return here will be fine we can then basically take this height map placement and replace all of the range of decorators with it and then making sure that we change this and change the name here and then i believe this should be fine this now is a placed feature there you go now this also returns no more errors same here this is now a placed feature and that's going to take this and then the or is going to be deleted that's going to be fine and the or configuration predicates has changed to become or features dot stone replaceable so for natural stone this is now stone replaceable also natural stone stone replaceable that's fine same here and for netherrack this is going to be or features dot nether or replaceable there you go and would you look at that if we've deleted all of the imports that is actually all that we need to do and that actually will do it that's that's basically it so this is all that we need to do to change the ore generation the ore type should be fine and i actually think that we are without errors now so you can see that it actually isn't that crazy of course it also depends on how much basically stuff you have in your mod uh, of course it's kind of you know it's a saddening thing that we don't have the biomes and we don't have the dimensions but it is what it is so what i'm actually going to do is i'm also going to delete the dimensions here just in case that they're, they're going to you know interfere when it comes to the data and stuff nothing should change if you have global loot modifiers for 117.1 what you need to do is you need to add a type variable basically in the well global loot modifier in there that has the same name as the actual file if you have no idea what i've just said then this is not for you the disclaimer basically however if you do have them then you basically need to add that that's very important should be very trivial just the type and then the name it's it's fairly straightforward apart from that we can now actually see whether or not everything here has worked so let's go and of course let's make a new world because not only have we messed with the world generation no this time we have even upgraded our version so let's see all right we find ourselves in a plains biome and as you can see first of all our trees are spawning and they're not spawning in a grid which is exactly what i don't want to see basically our flowers are spawning as well and now the only question is if we locate a dark forest we should also be able to find our ore so this is only going to spawn in a dark forest let's actually also add just so that we have it some a night vision right here so there you go and then go into spectator mode and let's see if we can't find it and there we have it i actually found some naturally spawning in the world so that is pretty cool so as you can see the ore generation also still working totally fine and when it comes to all of the other stuff well all of the other stuff is still in here you can see the test block still works right clicking it all of the other stuff let's see the mo the blowtorch just in case we need a magma block for that but of course you know nothing changed there so we can still right click it we're getting five charge and then we can right click this and then get the stuff out of it so everything here should still be working totally fine so that's actually how easy it can be to upgrade to 118.1 Right, but that would already be it for this tutorial right here. I hope you found this useful and you learned something new. Once again, if you are interested in already starting 118, the Forge tutorials are going to start on Tuesday. However, if you want to head start basically and get access to almost all of the topics plus additional topics that we're going to discuss in the tutorials, I have the course linked in the description below. So that is something to keep in mind. Otherwise, otherwise, I will see you in the next tutorial. So yeah.